It's check-in time for my overnight stay here at the Blennerhassett Hotel. We'll look into some of the haunted history of its library, which you can see straight ahead. Then we'll go upstairs for my overnight stay in room 407, right next door to number 409. They say is the most haunted room in the whole hotel, so stay tuned. Construction on the hotel began in 1883 and was completed six years later. In 1889, it was owned by William Nelson Chancellor, who first called it the Argyle Hotel, but later decided on the Blennerhassett Hotel, named after wealthy Irish settler Harmon Blennerhassett, who went on to buy his own island. It was known as a hotel for millionaires, a hotel for the rich and famous. The hotel has had several owners since Mr. Chancellor back in 1883. It's currently owned by r &W Hotels which is owned by Mr. Wayne Waldick and Eric Lee Rector. The restaurant is located right behind me and it has been at least three separate locations since the opening of the hotel. It's been on the second and the fifth floor and now it's down here on the first. They moved it up to the fifth floor for safety purposes where if it burned down, it would have nowhere to burn but up. So that was safe for those days and with updated safety codes, we can now have our restaurants down here on the first floor, although an upper floor view is sometimes nice. The hotel opened up just in time to usher in the era of electric to Parkersburg. This hotel in the day came equipped with indoor plumbing, steam heat, and gas lights, which you see behind me, which are reminiscent of those of the era. Like its many owners, many different visitors from all over and all walks of life have passed through these doors. You might say it's a little like the Hotel California. Apparently you can check out any time you like, but some folks, well, they just never left. Who are they? Why are they here? And do we need an exterminator? Those questions will be answered next. Spiritual historians and those in the know say that there are at least 13 ghosts which occupy different places of this premises. We're only going to deal with two of them here this evening, number seven and number 13, the screaming woman in the library and also poltergeists in the library. So as you can see, our focus is going to be on this room called the library. The library was renovated in 2020, making it more open and inclusive to a more diverse group of apparitions and more poltergeist friendly. So, what is a poltergeist anyway? Well, those in the know say they are a sudden burst of psychic or kinetic energy which cause disruption in our lives. Or they could be disembodied spirits displaced from this world, their normal habitat by death. And instead of passing on, well, they just decided to stick around. Remembering who they were, they're stuck somewhere between here and there. Trying to get back to their former world or better yet, trying to fit back in. Whether it be books, furniture, or other things of their era, or things they dislike, well, they just simply rearrange and reorganize them back the way they want them, as though they had a sense of fashion consciousness, or rather a bit of flair and panache. Call them designing poltergeists with an otherworldly sense of taste. Things that they don't like, they simply hide or remove. I suppose they could be like children trying to play hide and seek, or they could just want to be disruptive and cause problems. And as you can tell, I'm no longer inside the library. I stepped outside, and did you know that the library used to be part of a bank, and I never talked about this screaming woman. It is said there was a woman one time was coming to this place when this used to be a bank to make a deposit, and sadly, she ended up being hit by a truck and never made it. And there is at least one person who said that's who they believe the woman screaming in the library actually is. My room for the evening is number 407. It's located right next door to number 409, which they say is one of the most spiritually and ghostly active in the entire hotel. Now, if you don't believe me, then just listen to this. I told him, I said, I want a quiet side of the hotel. And I always choose this side of the hotel because it's always quiet. And the night I stay here, I never thought anything about it. This is 407 that adjoins 409. Uh, where I told you that uh, the furnishings, the furniture is a thing uh, in the, the lower level of this uh, little uh, room suite here. 
uh, you hear things at night. And that night I got woke up, I heard people coming in and out the door over here, and it sounded like they was having a party. And so I left the light on actually that night. And the next morning I went down and I told them, I said, I don't know who all was up there last night, but I said, the folks in 409 were so noisy. I left the light on, I couldn't sleep. There was a party going on in the early hours of the morning. And they said, well, Adam, you were the only person on that floor on that end of the hotel that night. Before I left the library or after I left, I forgot to tell you, there had been tales of furniture and books down there being moved around. There was an ottoman down there that whatever the covering, the liner over it, one time it was raised all the way up like a pitch tent and they're not sure why that happened. Um, and as I came up to the fourth floor, I decided I needed ice and the ice is on the second floor. So I went back down to the elevator on my floor, the fourth floor, and before I did, I heard knocks. Now, one thing about this floor, it's quiet. I'm not sure anyone else is up here. There could be, I mean, there could be someone staying next door. I don't hear them. I don't think there are, and I don't think there's someone on either side, but it's quiet up here. So I don't know where those knocks would have come from. They could have echoed up from the second floor. There's some kind of a conference going on down there. So I just thought I would let you know about that. Okay, folks, it's been a long day. I'm, I'm going to bed. Um, a lot of you may not know, but this is not my day job. I have a, a job that requires me to, to travel quite a bit. And sometimes I travel and work 8 to 12 hours a day. And then when my regular job is done, I go get my camera and my recording equipment, my sound stuff, and I go out and I make videos. So that's what I'm doing this evening. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. So um, what I'm going to do is leave my 360 camera on. It's located on the other side of the room. I think it's got enough battery to last until tomorrow. So it's going to be recording all night long. So I don't know what it will, will catch. But um, anyway, I'll get back with you and let you know what happens. So um, that's it. Noises during the night, knocking at my door. I thought I was dreaming, but I got up and checked anyway. I mean, something woke me up. Until then, I was sleeping like a baby, and later upon checking, my 360 sound confirmed. Knocking at my door, and I'm guessing it must have happened around 3 a.m. After getting out of bed and going to the door, I looked both ways, left towards 409, and right down the other side of the hallway, and nobody was there. And well, not being totally sure what I had just experienced, I decided I would sleep the rest of the night with the TV on.
My plan was to sleep in and start my work day a little bit later. So the alarm going off at 6 a.m. was certainly an unwelcome surprise, especially since I didn't set it. I mean, this is my fourth stay in room 407, and this floor is generally pretty quiet, so what was it that I heard? Could it be the poltergeist, like those reportedly, that reportedly occupy the library and perhaps the room next door? Could these events have a natural explanation? And they sometimes do when they are viewed logically. Or is it just me using my camera and sound equipment to play a trick on you? Well, if you want to find out for yourself, then reserve room 407 of the Blanner Hassett Hotel and see for yourself. I hope you've liked this video, and if you have, please click like and subscribe. And until next time, happy travels, everyone.